All right, guys, we're finished up with Ryan this week. Uh, Ryan is a junior in high school. He traveled from St. Louis, uh, Missouri. Ryan came in uh, Monday afternoon to get a new uh, prosthetic fit. Some of the issues he was having is just attributed to some growth. Uh, Ryan actually grew about a, almost an inch in length to his residual limb and about one to two centimeters in volume all the way down his residual limb. So, um, Ryan, what are some issues you were feeling with your prosthetic that made you feel like you need to come down here for a tune-up? Uh, well, whenever I was trying to run or walk, there was a little bump on the front of my leg that was rubbing against the the old prosthetic leg that I was wearing, and it was causing a lot of pain. So that was one thing that I was kind of noticing. And something I didn't really notice until I came here is that I had almost grown my entire knee out of the socket, so it was a good time to get a new leg. Uh, what kind of things do you do back at home besides walking on a prosthetic leg? Uh, I do track and cross country at home, and then I also like to swim and play with my friends or my brothers. What events do you run uh, for CAF and what recent records have you had? Uh, in adaptive track, I have a record in all three events I do, which is the 800, the 1500, and the 3000. So yeah, Ryan's been killing out on the track and traveling around the country actually for like junior Paralympics and going to CAF events to try to just up his game a little bit. And he has some aspirations to maybe do some triathlons for the Paralympics one day. So. Um, like I said, he came down here for a tune-up because he's experiencing some tightness on his leg. And I'm going to have him show his leg to us, so uh, please remove your prosthesis, Ryan. So what we do here a lot, you might have seen, is we do a P-Light stovepipe fit. Um, let's remove your sock, please. Ryan has uh, fibular hemimelia, so he has absence of his fibular bone. The main issue Ryan was having is that a lot of times patients present with this little bump over their tibia. And so this was causing a lot of pressure to him, was getting macerated and uh, just very uh, uncomfortable because of this was growing and the sock was unable to accommodate the growth and volume. Ryan also mentioned that uh, his knee was about, you know, all, it was all the way out of the socket. So um, it's important to have some prosthetic leg around his knee. We did some uh, laxity tests. He is positive for an anterior George sign and some varus and uh, valgus laxity. So uh, the support that the socket can kind of support his knee joint to prevent any strain on his ligaments to prevent any tears or anything like that. Uh, Ryan also noticed that down here was getting a little tight, which is where we squeeze either bulbous anatomically. So uh, what we do here a lot of times if we're able to get away from gel liners is we use uh, the patient's anatomy to use suspension over the distal end of the actual residual limb. So uh, just normal growth, normal growth in volume and in length. Ryan can fully distal end bear on the end of his leg, so we want to allow him the opportunity to do that. It's important for uh, bone density and bone strength over time to allow them to actually load their actual residual limb. Uh, Ryan also asked about why can't we just have the socket down here, and we've kind of told him a lot about uh, if the socket was just right down here, there will be an increased amount of force applied to this area because of all the pressure on this actual length of the leg and there's not a lot of surface area. So. Having a socket very low just on the shin bone can create a fracture to it and create a lot of pressure on, the, on that bone right there, which is not able to tolerate pressure. Uh, so that's why our socket is a little bit higher. You've seen some trim lines that have come a lot lower than the actual medial and lateral condyles, uh, but due to some laxity in his knee joint castle, we want to come up a little bit higher to give his knee a little bit of a support and prevent any injury to him. Uh, so right now, Ryan is uh, wearing this three-ply sock, uh, and we'll show you how to put it on. Uh, when he came here, he was wearing the thinnest amount of socks possible to get by due to the tightness that he was having. We do anticipate some more growth as he continues to mature and the skeletal maturity. And so I imagine, you know, in about a year, two years, uh, he might be down to what we call like a swift wick fit. You've seen those socks before, and this is how his leg uh, holds on. So you just put the sock on stuff down in there, and, and it's ready to go. Uh, Ryan's, uh, you might notice some alignment in here. Ryan's leg actually has a natural bow to it laterally, so he has to inset his foot a little bit to accommodate some valgus that he was uh, experiencing when he was walking. So we incorporated some abduction into his socket and some uh, medial inset of the foot. And so uh, all we really did here is uh, these feet have a heel bumper on them and we replaced the heel bumper for the stiffness version because he's an active walker, active user. And uh, all we did was just to make a socket that's more appropriate to the anatomy of his actual residual limb. Uh, one thing I want to talk about is when I slip this off real quick, please, Ryan. You might notice we added some extra P light over that little bump in his tibia. This will allow um, kind of more compression before he actually gets to carbon fiber. 
As it continues to grow, this little P-like patch can actually be removed by adding some thinner and the peel end off. Now create like a void in the socket to decrease pressure over that little, uh, we call it like a tibial dimple is what, what we call it. So you can use P-Lite, you can use Plastizone, it'll pack out quicker, but his last uh, P-Lite does not have this little patch of a bump over where his tibia bows a little bit. So adding this on there will make it a little more bulletproof to prevent any um, pressure he might feel on that bony aspect of his residual limb. And so right now uh, he uses the sock and the sheath, he, he goes right down in there. Um, because he's a competitive, Cross country and uh, slaying some records out there. We also uh, tune up his running blade. So the running blade socket fit is the same as his walking leg. And uh, all we really did was kind of break it off, raise up the height. We actually set up this height about an inch taller than his walking leg to accommodate for the compression of the blade. Um, so this is a little bit taller than uh, his, his walking leg, as you can kind of see right there. And so again, all we did was uh, keep that angle of abduction into his socket that he has in his walking leg, but with the posterior mount, you don't have a distal connector. So um, when Ryan first came to us, he had a very low profile foot and it was all kind of just carboned up all the way down, down on there and made for a heavier prosthesis. And um, how, when you have room to have a better foot to increase dynamics and roll over it, that's like what we try to do here. I like Ryan just to put this blade on really quick just to show easy on, easy off type stuff. And then I'm just going to have you maybe um, bounce this way and then bounce this way. And uh, that'll kind of be the summary of what we got going on here. So that's how it holds on. He, he can run, you know, he ran four miles while he was here in town testing this out. Like you said, he runs like 800 and 3,000 meter runs. And that all holds on the bottom. No gel liner, no pin lock, or no sleeve. So I'll go ahead and just kind of jog in place for me a little bit. And I face it this way. So you can see how this blade kind of compresses a lot. So that's why we, we raise it up a little bit to accommodate for that vertical displacement as he jogs. Um, so that's good, man. Um, so we're finishing up today. They spent about uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday morning today. So we got it all done in about three days. So uh, we are very humbled that you guys come all the way, um, five hours away to come work with us and appreciate the opportunity to keep working with them. Uh, Ryan, I started with him about five years ago, so it's been nice to see his progression and his activity level and looking forward to seeing what kind of things he gets into this previous, uh, this next year. All right, so safe travels.